Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you today? I'm good. I am coming up on a long weekend myself. Oh, lucky you. Yeah, so this is like my final uh, work task to do before I I head out. Final task before a long weekend. Mm -hmm. Wow, good for you. Yeah. And the weather, again, is stellar. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't think I've used that word yet this summer, stellar. But I mean, it is like blue sky. It's not too warm. It's just perfect. It is. It's so. It's been so beautiful. My brother sent me a um, a message today because he he's down in Florida, in the the Boca area, and um, he, he his business is he manages um condos. He like a condo sitting kind of business mm-hmm. type of thing where he checks on people's condos. And so he's walking, checking these condos, and he he showed me, he sent me a picture of, like, the Weather Channel thing for the day. <laughs> it's really hot. You know, and, and he's thinking about, like, imagine walking into all these condos with a mask on type of thing. And 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 his comment was, um, the joys of living in paradise, something like that. Mm-hmm. So I took a picture of the Weather Channel uh, forecast for today in Syracuse. And I said, this is living in paradise. <laughs> so, and I felt bad because he really loved, he really loves it up here. But mm-hmm. anyways, I just had to, you know, wh- why could I not, right? Yeah. It's, we o- it is gorgeous. We only have here. so many days we can brag about. Right. When, so. you know, he also loved the winters when he lived here. So. Oh, okay. But anyways, maybe someday he'll come back. He has daughters that live in Canada now, so my guess is he's going to go to Canada and not here. But anyways, <laughs> that's not we're not here to talk about me rubbing, you know, my brother's nose and the fact that it's much more delightful here than it is in Boca right now. But we are here to talk about, do you know where you're going? Mm-hmm. So we kind of gave our listeners a heads up last week when we said, you know, last week's um, title was Don't Leave Home Without It. And it was really the, the realization that now more than ever, we need empathy in our organizations, in our world, in our country, in our communities. And I had mentioned in last week's post that empathy coupled with vision is really what we need. So today we, we really do need to talk about vision. And, and when I started thinking about that, um, I, I realized that there's a lot of people that think about mission and vision, and they think about them as the same thing. And they're really not the same thing. Um, you know, a vision is, is what you do. I'm sorry, a mission is what you do. A vision is where you're going. So if you think about mission statement, a mission statement, well, I can't call a mission, can I? It's, why can't I talk to them? Maybe because it's the end of the day. Trust me, the only thing in my bottle that says Perrier is Perrier. There's nothing else in it. But so a mission statement question would look something like this. What do we do? Whom do we serve? And how do we serve them? Now, those are very, very important things to to think about. But think about a vision statement that would be something like, what are our hopes and dreams? You can tell already we're in a very different realm. What problem are we solving for the greater good? Simon Sinek likes, likes to refer to that as a just cause. And who and what are we inspiring to change? And And the reason why I'm going to say that that vision is so critical is that when you are leading through uncertain times, your missions and strat- your mission, your strategic plans may go right out the window because nothing is constant in times of uncertainty. So, you know, the way you did things might change. Mm-hmm. The way you interacted with your teams may change. So the strategies, throw them out the window because they're not going to work. But if our vision is there, if we can communicate our vision to our teams, they still know the direction we're going. And, and I think the way I wrote it in the post, if I'm going to pull it up because, well, it won't even help me to pull it up because my family knows that I don't read what I wrote. And I don't even read what's there half the time. I make up what I want. But the point is, think about this. Think about a lighthouse. Um, lighthouses mark harbors. They mark rocky shoals that you could crash into if you don't know they're there. And, and the reality is we don't need a lighthouse 
when it's daylight. And we don't need a lighthouse when there's calm seas. We need a lighthouse when it's dark and when it's stormy and when the waves are beating up against us. Your vision is your lighthouse. Your vision is that future state of, you know, where... And, and Simon Sinek said this really well. I was, I was watching some of Simon's clicks, uh, clips today on YouTube. Highly recommend people just do a YouTube search on Simon Sinek. You will learn something with every one and a half minute clip that you, you watch. But he talked about a vision being something so incredible that you'll spend your entire life trying to achieve it. And you may never get there but it still just inspires you and draws you because there's something something meaningful in a vision. And if you think about our teams, what are they looking for now? They're looking for something to rally around. They're looking for something to draw them together. They're looking for something to distract them from the reality of, do my kids go to school five days a week, three days a week? When does school start? Our vision can be the constant that they're looking for. And I loved how Simon did this too. He actually took us, and, and one of the things I was listening to, he took the listeners back to the founding of our country. In, and we've used this. We hold these truths to be self-evident. And he said, think about that statement, the preamble to the Declaration of Independence. That's a vision statement. And for more than 200 years, people have fought and died to, to, to strive toward that vision that all men are created equal and have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So that's the power in this vision piece. Now, Marissa, when I was when I was writing about this, was there any, did you make any connection or was there any confusion between the why and the vision? Because, you know, I've been a person that's always talked to you. You and I have worked through mm -hmm. me finding my why, and, and we communicated that to our listeners some time ago. No, but did I... That, I think the examples that you gave with you know, the lighthouse made it easier to yep. understand. I think sometimes, it, um, you know, you're very right. Like we confuse mission with vision. Um, right. And I, sometimes, I, I mean, this might just be a problem that I have. It's like I have an understanding of the difference, but it's, it can be really hard to describe. Um, mm -hmm. It's more something for me that needs to be like experienced. But um I think your examples are really good. They helped really make sense of it. And I think when you think about, you know, you, you drew some parallels to not just our organizations, but to our families. And I think, right. you know, had you not mentioned that, I probably wouldn't have drawn that parallel on my own. But, mm -hmm. you know, you specifically mentioned like right now, that's something that our organizations and our families really need to yes. to move toward tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And I think that's really, really important to think about. Um, and, you know, our, our organizations, our families, and even just like ourselves, right? Like, yes. so we have the why, right? That's, I think that's how we got, how I got mm -hmm. talking is you asked me about the why. So I think, and, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when I think about my why, that almost feels more like my mission okay I, I mean i sort of like similar more similar than vision okay sure so the the why think about this absolutely there can be some 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 mission in your why but think about a why is like a foundation for the vision yeah that makes sense to me the, if you think about building a house, your why is your foundation. Simon Sinek, cause, and I cheated, so I actually kind of looked up what Simon Sinek thought the difference was between vision and why. And he said, a why is looking backwards. And I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense. But but when if our listeners remember, when I went through my finding my why, mm -hmm. it was reflecting on your past. So he said, your why is a, is derived from your past experiences and what things moved your heart in the past. So he said, that's the foundation. He said, your vision is what the house looks like. And I thought, well, that's, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and if we can inspire our, our children, you know, our spouses, our, our peers, if we can inspire people with this vision of a future state, that's the vision. 
people can rally mm. around that. And, and the danger in holding up the mission or the strategies when we're in uncertain times is they may not be applicable anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to try to use a, a home example instead of a work example. So if, if part of my, let, let's say my vision for my children is that they become productive, contributing citizens good, honest, productive, contributing citizens making a difference in the world. And some of the goals, the strategic planning might be, especially when they're in, in, you know, um, in elementary school or, or junior high school, senior high school era, ages. Okay, so this is the goal would be next year for you to apply yourself in these kinds of classes and you're going to do this and that and something else and we plan it all out and, and all of a sudden... We aren't sure if we're going to have school or are we going to have school virtually or in person? Maybe part of the plan was, part of the strategic planning was, let's say we, had a, we have a child that really is very outgoing, um, a person that loves to collaborate with others. And we're saying, you know, your goal for this year would be to um, go out for the football team, uh, go out for the, the, the cheer squad, um, run for student council. Um, be on the yearbook staff, and then all of a sudden you find out those might not happen. All so if we focus on the strategy, we can get really confused. Mm-hmm. But if we take our focus back to say, okay, what is our vision? Our vision is for you to be an, a complete person, a person that engages well with other people. How do we do that in this environment, as opposed to? what we thought we were going to have. So that to me, that's the power of the vision. Mm-hmm. You know, when, and the other thing, if you think about the, um, the analogy that I gave of the lighthouse, um, it's interesting for me when I've, when I've been out in a boat and I have a focal point that I know where I want to go. And I can, I can kind of see that. But if I don't pay attention, it's real easy to have winds or currents pull you off course and you don't even know it. Until all of a sudden you look back up at, at the, the focal point and you're, you're coming off the mark. So when we get into uncertain times, I kind of use the example of, of a ship in, in my writing. But we get knocked back and forth. You know, the waves are splashing. Um, sometimes, and sometimes, I've had this too where you can't see the landmark until you come over the top of the next wave. So you better have somebody that's focused on the vision because you're going to have to do course corrections. And that's what I think uncertain times are. They're just waves and winds and storms that push us off course, but we can always come back if we know exactly where the, the lighthouse is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think you, know, you mentioned earlier too, like right now is it, and there are many times, not just right now, but where thing like most things are inconsistent. There's yeah. um, things that will not remain constant. Um, right. Times will be unpredictable. Um, and I think the vision is something that kind of defies that, right? Like it, it gives yes. you something to to look at and say like, okay, but this is still here. Right. Like this is still where we want to be. Or yep. This is still the person that I want to be. Or Yes. Um, and, it's, and it's just like, okay, so how do I change what I'm doing? How do we adjust that strategy, that strategic plan? Exactly. Um, you know, maybe I think, you know, missions don't tend to change too often, but they do change. And I think right. a lot of companies are going to be looking at that right now as, yes. you know, maybe their delivery methods are changing or right. um, just the, the, we've got members who are diversifying their product lines and Mm -hmm. totally changing what they're doing. So I I think it's really important to, to remember that, like, and then to also communicate and, and make, have a lot of clarity around the vision, especially now, especially when things feel so crazy and, um, and just so turbulent and unsure it's important to have a lot of clarity around that vision. Right. You know, a, a leader, you, as a leader, you can't over-communicate vision. Mm-hmm. 
Let me say that again because it's kind of convoluted. You can't over-communicate vision because vision leaks. Vision doesn't, you know, it's easy for us to forget the vision when the waves are slamming up against the boat. Mm -hmm. But the, so the leader keeps reminding the people of what the vision is, sharing the vision, sharing the inspiration and, and, and finding ways to make it very visual for their, for their teams. And, And there was an interesting thing that, that Simon Sinek was saying when I was looking into this, he said, we can't or we can only see things that we can put into words, which I thought was really interesting. E- mm-hmm. Even though there's parts of our brain that, that aren't capable of words, but for us to really see a vision, our leaders have to be able to articulate it. And they need to think about it. And the clearer you are, the better you can describe in words, the better the people can see it. So as leaders, we have to really, really clarify what is our vision? What, where do we believe our organization can go? As parents, what is our vision for our family? What, you know, what types of interactions do we really want our, our family to have? Um, where would we like our children to be? And I don't say that in terms of success type things, but you know, as, as, as people, what, what, what do, do we envision them to be? And I'm hoping that we're going to say is we want them to achieve their fullest potential to be the fullest version of who they want to be that they can be. Now, how do I get there? You know, how, and, and I think it's by valuing, the, by valuing the child, by valuing who the child is, by affirming their giftedness. Doesn't mean we don't correct. We absolutely have to correct. But valuing giftedness and helping them, um, helping them develop that giftedness. Not, not hammering on shortcomings, but celebrating giftedness, which is a huge difference. And, and, in, and in the times when, when, when the waves are beating and the rain's falling and it's dark and stormy, those are things that are going to carry families through it. That's what's going to carry our teams through, through stormy times too. There was a great quote that Simon Sinek said. He said, a leader without a vision is a follower. So every leader needs to think about that. If you don't have a vision, you're not a leader. You're a follower. And that should wake them all up to say, okay, what am I missing with my vision? So one of my thoughts was, so how do you develop a, a vision? And, and I think you start by dreaming big. You know, what? So I, I had a couple examples that I found. Um, Habitat for Humanity. Their dream, their vision, a world where everyone has a decent place to live. You think about that. Mm-hmm. That is a huge, talk about dreaming big. Walt Disney, to make people happy. Cold Stone Creamery, the ultimate ice cream experience. Microsoft, empower people through great software anytime, any place, and on any device. Those are, dream- those are big dreams. Yeah. But you got to dream big because that's, and, and what happens is your vision, your vision is, so maybe I can put it this way. A vision is very inspirational and it's, and that inspiration is not dependent on success in the moment. A mission can be inspirational, but oftentimes is dependent on, so it's inspiration is dependent on us being able to be executing the mission. That's why it's so important to have the vision first and let the mission trickle out of your vision. Your vision is what you do and who you serve. Your, your mission is what you do and who you serve. Your vision is why are we doing this? And what change in the world can we really make that's going to be a positive impact? As Simon Sinek would say, what is the just cause that, you, that your organization exists for? And the neat part is, when you have that clear vision, it's really, really hard to be discouraged. Because you just keep looking for the, the, another way to implement your vision. So again, it's empathy. Empathy's key. But empathy without a vision doesn't take people to a better place. So you have to couple empathy and vision to get to a better place. And to stay on course when things look kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. And hey... They look crazy. Now, I will, I will say this. I think those of us that want to believe that 
things were more certain, we're probably just, in the past, we're probably just deceiving ourselves. We just didn't realize how uncertain they were. So that should kind of be comforting to us, that we can become really, really good dealing with uncertainty. Does that sound like a logical statement that we can become really, really good at dealing with uncertainty? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a logical statement, right? Because we always did. We just didn't realize it. Right. We I... thought that what we had was, was, was certain, but it wasn't. Right. It may have been a little more predictable or a little bit more mm -hmm. routine, but it was not yes. certain. Thank you. I like that. It might have been more predictable. It was certainly more routine. But it was by far not certain. Mm -hmm. It was filled with uncertainty. We just didn't know when the next wave was going to hit us. So right. it's almost as though, you know, if I'm, since I'm going to go back to a boating metaphor. Get back on shocking, that boat. <laughs> shocking. Soon, soon. Very, very soon. I will give an update before we're done on the boat. Um, I haven't talked about it for weeks and weeks. So um, it's easier to go through predictable, like ch rough waves. Mm -hmm. if, you, if they're predictable, it is easy to keep your boat on course. It's really hard when you get a rogue wave on a calm day type of thing because you didn't see it coming. If, you th if people, are, people that are on boats know, if you're on a fairly calm lake but there's a lot of boat traffic, it is really, really hard to maneuver your boat because you never know when that next wave is going to come mm -hmm. across you. But if you're out on a typically windy, rough day, okay, I know what I know. I need to keep looking. I know I need to be aware of the waves that are going to come. So you keep your eyes open, you're alert, and you have no trouble going through it. The rogue waves are the ones that kill you. So if I know things are rough, I'm alert. So I honestly think it can be easier for us to lead when we're finally off cruise control and we're we're working through the uncertain times, provided we see our 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 lighthouse. We know where it is, and we keep going in that direction. And to make sure when we travel, we travel with empathy. I think I'm done. It's, it's a, it's a, you know, I'm glad. I like your example. I know we always joke that you come back to, to boats, but I think it really does help explain something that can sometimes be hard to understand the difference. Yeah, yeah. So here's the update on the boat. Okay. So about six weeks ago, I gave up on trying to make the engine run. I took it out again. I took it to someone who actually somebody picked it up for me, took it to a motor builder who has completely rebuilt the entire motor, remachined the cylinders, new pistons. I won't get into all the details. And this evening, technician Tim and I will put it in the boat. <laughs> it's all rebuilt. And I didn't screw it up because I didn't do it. So, no, um, there were some things that none of us saw that were structural issues within the intake manifold. I don't want to get into details, but there was a broken piece that none of us saw. Mm -hmm. And that was the root cause. But while they were replacing that, they just pretty much made it brand new for us. So hopefully by the next time we record, I will be able to give you an update that all is well. Good. It's been a, a long journey. It's been almost two years. Mm -hmm. So anyways... But it's all good. And you're going to have a long weekend, which is super exciting. I mm -hmm. hope you rest and recharge and come back Tuesday ready to take on the world. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Good. So hopefully there will be a couple things you can share with us that were super exciting for you. Yes. Point, I will let you great. know. <laughs> all right. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page.